The Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, used to walk beside the graves of Jannat al Baqi and say, Peace be upon you, O abode of the faithful. When Allah wills, we shall join you soon. O Allah, please forgive the inhabitants of Baqi. In this garden from the gardens of paradise, sons and daughters, mothers and fathers, aunts and uncles, loyal companions, and selfless martyrs have found their eternal rest. Our Prophet وسلم, used to send his pure salutations upon them, and he would shed his tears. How then would the heart of our Prophet be aggrieved if he saw Jannat al-Baqi today? In the 19th and 20th centuries, European explorers such as Richard Burton would visit the holy city of Medina. They would write of its quaint beauty, its white walls, golden slender minarets and green fields. But in 1924, the Wahhabis began an uprising on the orders of King Ibn Saud and carried out a merciless massacre within the holy cities. People were killed in the streets. Houses were razed to the ground. Not even women and children were spared. Orn ibn Hashim, the Sharif of Mecca, writes, Before me, a valley appeared to me to have been paved with corpses. Dried blood, staining everywhere, all around. There was hardly a tree which didn't have one or two dead bodies piled upon its roots. By 1925, Medina surrendered to the Wahhabi onslaught. All signs of Islamic heritage were destroyed including the graves of Hamza salam, and the valiant martyrs of Ohud. Each of them were raised to the ground. The brave and honorable individuals who gave their lives in sacrifice for the establishment of Islam only 100 years ago endured the height of extremism when terrorists destroyed and disrespected their blessed places of rest. The only holy symbolism to remain was the dome of the Holy Prophet Although the Wahhabis wished to destroy it, but due to international pressure from Muslim nations, particularly in Iran, Iraq, Egypt, Indonesia, and Turkey, they desisted. The Wahhabi purge continued to Jannat al-Mu'alla in Mecca, with the graves of Umm al-Mu'mineen Khadija salam, and the great Abu Talib salam, were also brutally demolished. How ironic that the people who claim to love the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, yet they terrorized his beloved ones and his followers in their eternal place of rest. How ironic that the people who claim to follow the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, by destroying graves according to the Sunnah, yet there is not a single event from history where you see the Holy Prophet ordering for the massacre of people, nor for the destroying of graves. It is in fact, they, the enemies of Islam, who have nothing to do with its heritage nor its history. Does not Allah say in Surah Al-Hajj, whoever respects the signs of Allah, this is surely the outcome of the piety of the hearts. What will they say to Allah on the day of judgment when they are asked about the blood that they have shed, the corruption that they have propagated, and the efforts they exerted in trying to obliterate the memory and the history of Islam. Does not Allah say in Surah al ghafir and he shows you his signs, which then of Allah's signs will you deny? One day they will enter their graves and know the majesty of those whom they disrespected. You cannot kill Islam through the hiding of God's signs because Allah's greatest sign still walks amongst us. In Mecca, he will announce his mission next to the Holy House. The lies of the enemies of Ahl al-Bayt will crack like the crack on the Kaaba caused by the birth of his grandfather. One day, Imam al-Mahdi, ajalallahu faraj al-Sharif, will walk the steps of his father, Rasulullah, and send his salams to the inhabitants of Baqi. Instead of pigeons and mounds of dirt, there will be domes and believing men and women circulating amongst them. You cannot kill Islam through the hiding of Allah's signs because Allah's greatest sign is still to rise.